Look what we've got from all the laser, this tiny little laser engraver, the Pixie. I told them I was running out of space in the workshop and I think they took me a little too literally. Now on paper, it seems perfect for a young maker like Levy, but let's be honest, it might just end up being an excuse for a grown man to get his hands on a cool new piece of tech. That's the question we are answering today. So is this destined for Levy's shelf right next to his 3D printer? Find out how we decided and why. I'm Gergo and this is Gergo Print 3D, our YouTube channel where my little nephew Levy and I have a blast with all kinds of DIY projects and tools, mostly 3D printing, but laser working as well. As with all the previous videos in our collection, this one has curated translation ready subtitles, chapter markers, and now even audio tracks in a dozen languages. The team at Algo Laser asked us if we wanted to review their DIY kit MK2, another open frame diode laser. We've already seen a few of those. In fact, we tested their DIY mini and found it to be quite great. Since we are a family oriented channel, I requested that an enclosure and safety kit be included. These open frame machines should not be used without an enclosure, both because of laser hazard and the toxic fumes, especially not in a family setting. Hearing this, my contact at Algo Laser recommended the Pixie instead, which sounded like a perfect fit. Small box for a laser. Yeah, this is the thing. Algo Laser sent this device for us to test and review, but they have no influence on our opinions and no money changed hands. In fact, our decision process is very similar to any buyer's research. We make similar choices, except we are working from a budget of our time instead of money. This is the Pixie. This is the box. See how excited Levy is? The footprint of this device is similar to his mini 3D printer, the GTEC M1 we reviewed a few months ago. And even their work areas are identical. 100 by 100 millimeters with an option to raise the gantry by 100 millimeters to accommodate taller objects. But this is no toy. We received the 10 watt variant, which matches the power of the DIY Mini and the ACMA P1, both very capable machines. The form factor is reminiscent of our very first laser engraver, the Wayne Lux K10. But not only is this three and a half times more powerful, it also comes with a full color touch screen running the very capable Algo OS software. This allows for fully standalone operation, remote control via a mobile device, and even industry standard light burn compatibility. We'll test all these in a minute, but let's see what else is in the box. It's not very satisfying, but a peel is a peel. I like it so far, I like it so far. Mm -hmm. According to the spec sheet, the laser spot size is 0.08 by 0.12 millimeter, ideal for engraving, but also capable of cutting wood or even tinted acrylic. Mm -hmm. A little hammer. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. I think it's a, it's a focus. Order in the cord. It's the measuring tool for setting focus manually in combination with the thumb screw on the tool head. Honestly, given my track record, they probably should have just included an actual hammer for when I inevitably mess things up. The motion system is capable of moving the tool head at speeds of 6,000 millimeters per minute on paper, though as you will see, line drawing accuracy diminishes over 3,000 millimeters per minute. As you can see, the Pixie is a fully enclosed class one laser device, which means it includes multiple levels of protection against the laser beam escaping. There's this tinted enclosure cover, a tinted laser head cover, and internal safety features like door, tilt, and even shake sensors. Do, do, do. That vent pipe, which can be extended to a full meter, is part of the built-in ventilation system. I later designed and 3D printed a reducer which helped us connect it to an 80 millimeter diameter hose which we already had. The result is very effective smoke extraction. You can barely smell anything in the room. 
The third component of the safety system is electrical. We get an external 60 watt, 24 volt power supply, which means only low voltage enters the device. So we have a very big pill mm -hmm. This is the one piece. Mm -hmm. Nice. This, I had much more trouble. There is a pill inside of it too, maybe? Yes, there is. I actually suggested checking the manual to see if it really needed to be removed. The user manual is super high quality with easy to follow explanations and full color images, but no mention of leaving protective films. So we ended the unboxing with another huge peel. Nice and clear, perfect. So is this device something that Levy will want? Let's test it and decide. Setup was easy. Just plug it in, connect to Wi-Fi, and it prompts you to set a child lock code. Could this be intended for kids if it has a child lock? Well, it could be for younger siblings. We were immediately greeted with an over-the-air firmware update, which completed smoothly. Nice. The main selling point is the standalone operation. And to be honest, it's a bit of a mixed bag. However, we ran into a real life situation where it was actually useful. We recently spent a few days at the family's lake house where we had an unfortunate burglary earlier this year. To hopefully prevent future break-ins, Levy's mom gave us a task to 3D print a fake security camera. The model we chose from Thingiverse is actually the chassis of a real one but without the internals, it should serve well as a prop. So we installed the fake camera Assembled. and to make the illusion complete, we needed one of those little warning plaques about constant video surveillance. You know, most people's first response to a burglary is to call an alarm company. A maker's response? Hold my filament, I've got this. Notice the new drill case though. This is something I custom fitted using the Otter Lite 3D scanner we got from Geek Buying and printed on the Sovol SVO8 Max. It could barely fit on our largest printer, but turned out to be the perfect home for this tool. If you subscribe, you'll be notified when our video about that project drops. You can tell I'm pretty proud of it. Anyway, this tiny pixie is about the only machine compact enough to take to our weekend house or camp or fair or to a client's home to quickly whip up a personalized sign to deter burglars, for example. Still, it's a bit of a hassle. Typing on the miniature touchscreen is doable, but there are no special characters for our native Hungarian and there are only two fonts to choose from with no formatting options besides size. The coated metal card was in the internal material library and we were able to position and engrave it in a few minutes. It's just nice to have a compact, safe and powerful enough device to do small jobs like this on the go. It's all about the looks anyway. That little sign sells the illusion, hopefully. Later we slowed down the job to significantly improve the quality. We also tried the algo sketch option. It's a unique feature, but due to the low resolution screen and even lower resolution touch sensor, the quality is really basic. Still, it could be useful for a crafts project at a summer camp, for example, allowing kids to personalize something with strict adult supervision, of course. Using the Pixie with the Algo Laser mobile app is another beginner friendly option. Pairing over Wi-Fi was seamless, but it does require the engraver to be connected to a hotspot, which could just be your phone, making it another on-the-go alternative. To be honest, we didn't spend that much time with the mobile app. Levy generated this cool dragon image with ChatGPT, and we attempted to turn it into a puzzle, one of the choices in the app. Everything went well initially. We could set the number of pieces and select the background image. However, we had to guess the settings as there's no material library in the app. 
it's also not clear how to control the engraving versus the cutting parts of the job. Our first attempt took over an hour and ended with a burnt engraving, while the two cutting passes weren't enough to get through the material. For the second and then the final third successful attempt, we reduced the puzzle size, lowered the power to 60 and later to 40%, which seems to only affect engraving, and increased the cutting passes first to four and then to six, which finally did the trick. Perfect success. If you appreciate us figuring these things out and, you know, making mistakes so you don't have to, please take a moment to hit that like button. It really helps us out. And thank you if you did. The app has plenty of potential and for countless fun projects, it's a fantastic and free way to get creative. The question is, would it be enough for Levy? You see, the real deal for laser control is of course Lightburn and Levy is a bit spoiled as Lightburn is the software he learned on with our other lasers and he loves the power it gives him. Even for the mobile first generation, once you've tasted that level of control, a simpler app can feel like a downgrade. Now, that power comes with a price tag. A core Lightborn license is about a hundred bucks, but it's best to think of it as a one-time investment, not just for the Pixie, but for almost any laser you might own in the future. Connecting Pixie to Lightburn on my Windows PC was a breeze. It was automatically detected and added. The company didn't provide a material library, but I could just repurpose the settings I developed for my DIY Mini 10 Watt. I cut these keychain logos from 3 mm plywood in two passes at 350 mm per minute and 90% power. Aligning graphics in the tiny work area is really easy, so I enjoyed cutting 18 of these from scrap pieces for my friends. By the way, a mini vacuum like this Hotto is indispensable when it comes to projects like this. Get yours with a 20% discount using my link and code below. So that was cutting. Before engraving, we ran material tests on plywood and painted metal cards. According to these, the best setting for both is 3500 millimeters per minute at 50% power. A bit curious that they are the same, but a fantastic news for my brain, because that's one less number I have to try to remember. We engraved Levy's Dragon on this slate coaster using a 45 degree crosshatch at 2500 millimeters per minute and 80% power. And it turned out amazing with quality on par with my 55 watt CO2 laser. Just a bit slower, of course. By default, Lightburn won't let you frame with the lid open or turn on the low power laser beam for alignment. Make sure to enable laser fire button and laser on when framing at a low power like 3%. I wish we'd done that before aligning the slate coaster. With those settings, centering the dragon on this cork coaster was much easier. So many blanks can be purchased in this 4 inch 100 millimeter size. Look how perfect this turned out at 5,000 millimeters per minute and 50% power. And then we did the ultimate project. The one Levy came up with a year and a half ago. Yes, I'm talking about the laser cut and 3D printed pins we've made for so many occasions. The inserts are laser engraved and cut from three millimeter plywood while the frame is 3D printed. Already having a tiny 3D printer, now with the Pixie, Levy is all set to make these pins completely on his own. The Pixie proved to be the perfect device for this cutting and engraving the inserts. You could do three or four at a time. While his M1 Mini can churn out the 3D printed parts for him. Such a satisfying, perfect fit. So the final question, is the Pixie going on his shelf? There are many reasons for it to go there. It's a very safe device for a responsible youngster to elevate his DIY project. It has enough power to be way more than just a toy. Like his 3D printer, 
it takes up less space than a sheet of paper. It's ready to be used with just the mobile phone he already has. And the creative possibilities are nearly endless. So why is this staying in our workshop for now? Even though the Pixie meets high safety standards, a laser cutter still works with fire. A 12-year-old shouldn't operate it by himself. And if we are doing it together, why not do it in the workshop? Working with materials like wood and slate and painted metal will always be messier than 3D printing PLA. You still need to vent the fumes and the sticky residue needs to be cleaned regularly. The mobile software is capable, but Levy is spoiled by Lightburn, which he has full access to here. And the best reason? Whenever he needs it for a project at his place, he can just take it anytime, even in a backpack. If you're thinking about dipping your toe into laser cutting, either for yourself or with a child, the Algo Laser Pixie is an excellent, complete starting package. It won't take over your house or drain your wallet. To make sure you don't grow it out too quickly, I recommend getting the 10 watt or at least the 5 watt variant. If you follow our links to the product page and use the discount code GERGO10, you'll get a significant 10% discount and they'll know we sent you. Our channel is three part 3D printing and one part laser cutting. So we are returning to our Sovol SVO8 Max and its siblings in the next couple of videos, but every 3D printing workshop needs at least a little laser engraver. We invite you to watch more of our adventures with these laser machines, the full story on Levy Spins in this video, and our first acquaintance with a rotary roller in this one. And you can still go print 3D. Thank you for watching this Gago Print 3D video all the way to its end. Go laser cut.